Wow, that's, that's fantastic. Did you know, like, I remembered your talk at the SEWF in Scotland, mm -hmm. okay? And we, I remembered you talk about this diffusion, what was it? A diffusion of innovation theory. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I, was try, I was trying to connect this theory, theoretical, you know, framework with the way that you were explaining the good market. Yeah. Yes. OK, yep. so I was thinking, you know, I, I want to ask you how much this theory has to be in the way the good market was eventually developed or it was it's, just a way to explain the good market. No, no, it's it's very much connected. <laughs> OK, <laughs> because, wow. Because OK, if you look like I. Um, I had all this on the ground work that was happening and obviously that completely changes your way of understanding the world, right? Because it's it's human interactions. But I also did a master's and a PhD, right? Well, okay, and okay, hold on. I use that let's, as a let's chance. Explain, okay, let's explain the audience first. What is that about, in a very simple word, though? What is this diffusion of innovation theory? Yeah, yeah what so is that's this? what I was going to say. So okay. These two things come together, right? Like okay. the, the thing, if you're trying to understand how does change happen so all of us together, we're, we're a social system, right? Social economic system, right? And we're a complex system. It's constantly changing, right? And it's not as simple as you put in, it's not like, it's not like you put in A plus B and you get C. It's a complex system. You can't predict it. It's constantly changing. And in a situation like that, how do you have change in society, right? How have social movements worked in the past? How do new ideas spread through society? And so I used the time when I was doing things that were like academic research to try and get a deeper understanding of what do we know about that, right? And there's a, there's a number of different things. This is just one, right? But a, an example of how things spread is they did work on, it came out of agriculture actually, how do new agriculture ideas spread? This is back in um, I think the forties and fifties. And it's like, um, you have early adopters, um, you have innovators, early adopters, then there's the early majority, late majority, and what they call laggards, people who are really slow to adopt a new technology. And if you look, just about any idea that kind of flows through society, that pattern is there, right? Now, you might be an early adopter in one area and not in another area, right? Like you might be, or an innovator in one area. So you might be like, the first person to start bringing your own bag to the supermarket, <laughs> but you might have a really old phone, <laughs> right? So you're like a laggard on technology things. So it's not like you're you're always one thing, but the point is, is that any change that's pushing through, you have this innovator and early adopter as like the first group, right? And what we're learning is when you hit a certain point and it's not 100% of the society, it, it looks like it's like usually between 10 and 15%, a lot of, you hit kind of a tipping point and change shifts really fast through society. So we've seen this, for example, um, just like shifts in norms around LGBT communities as a really great example of all this work by people kind of pushing and pushing and pushing who are the innovators and early adopters for years and then getting to a certain point where things start to tip, right? So when we're talking about this work, it's the same thing, right? We've got We've got all of these innovators and early adopters, some of whom have been working for decades and just doing amazing work. And we have to recognize them, right? Like we have to, we have to celebrate them and all the foundations that they've built. Like this is the, the roots of where, this is what we're building off of, right? And now we're at a stage where we have a lot more people who are seeing what's happening in the world in their own communities, with the climate, with the political situation, with all these things. And they're, they're wanting to be able to do more. And they all have different things that kind of bring them there. Sometimes it's when they have kids. Sometimes it's like they're retiring. It's different things are happening in people's lives where they're like, they're kind of thinking, I, you know, I, this doesn't feel right. We want to do things in a different way. And so the whole thing is about if we can make the, the first group, the innovators and early adopters more visible, make it easy for them to connect, make it strengthen the work that they're doing, and then make it super easy for all the early majority people to get involved.
right? So that, that's, that's where it's coming from. That's, that's how the two things are connected. Wow. <laughs> Might be more information than you wanted. <laughs> no.